behalf of Prime Minister, a very warm welcome to this evening. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, because uh, you've all got a selection, you've got a choice, and we've got some very, very talented people here. So we're going to go one at a time. We've taken a, we've done a draw, and what we're going to do is that each candidate will come up and speak for five minutes about themselves and what they propose, blah, blah, blah. And then when they've finished and we've got a timer, we will be given a question, um, and it's out of the concept plan, uh, which is our local Bible. And uh, what we try to do is get form a relationship that we have from the territory forward the council and that interaction between the three, so it's quite important. The other thing I took on myself to um, invite Gray along, uh, he's done a Say a few words and we're going to ask him a couple of curly questions, some real bad ones. So, anyway, very warm welcome to everybody. And uh, the names come out of the hat. The first one is Adrian. Okay. So, anyway, I was first elected to council in 2010, and my priorities at that time were open communications between council and the community. I felt that sometimes a lot of issues happened because people didn't understand properly what council was doing or where they were coming from. And there was also a general feeling that council wasn't listening to people or people weren't having the um, opportunity to make themselves heard. So open communications wasn't still as a big thing for me. Um, good systems of policies, it seemed lots of things were happening or not happening because of a lack of good systems and people being people not being clear about what was expected of them and what they should be doing, etc. Um, and then basics, basics and spending was another thing because um, Times were tough when I first went to council, and they still are in town for a lot of people. Um, and of course, we can now add our farmers probably to that list of people who are struggling. When I moved here, um, this was what I was going to say, but um, Catterholt Harvey was still going when I moved here. It was quite a rich town, it seemed to me. And when they closed down, it took some time to show, but it really has hurt the town, I think, and it's still um, hurting. So, um, and your priorities in spending, but basically we've got a lot of um, spending on infrastructure coming up, much of it um, dictated by um, government and environmental policies, money that we have to spend. So it is basic spending, but it's money that we have to spend. We don't actually have an option to, to do anything more fancy with that money. So there's, there's not much money left over to play with now. Um, what I would like to see happen though is the, is the um, water park in Princess Street fixed up. Those are the first things People see when they come into town, they don't look very attractive and it wouldn't cost much just to make them look a little bit nice. I'd like to see the owners of the um, food court do something about their rusty looking roofs and everything. I don't think it does much to when you walk into a food place to see rust all over the walls and, um, and people are making comments about that sort of thing that they wouldn't stop it here because of just the look of the whole general area. So, so that's something I would like to see, even if it was just a matter of some nice pure water running over natural stones and some ferns around the place, just something that looks nice and attractive, a nice place to sit, perhaps, and think about spending money in Botaro, hopefully. Um, priorities at the moment, we need growth to pay for all that we need to do. So more populate, a bigger population means more people um, sharing the load. And, um, yeah, an increased population um, also will create jobs, um, give it increased profits to local businesses, and, and just bring a cap and injection of capital to our um, local economy as people sell up in Auckland and come down here with a few extra dollars in their pockets. Um, we also need to look out for our farmers who are, who are facing intense pressure from all sides at the moment. Um, we've already signed deals, agreements with Iwi. Um, for riparian plantings and riparian, riparian fencing and all that sort of thing that has cost farmers significant money and now the government's wanting to have another bite at that same bullet and um, at the same time their land values have gone down. So I shall hastily move to the end. Um, and yeah, basically if I had time to fill in, I was going to mention I belong to lots of groups and blah blah blah. Basically my vision for Bataro is just revitalised, revitalised economy, revitalised business um, district, revitalised everything and, just, um, and the hospitality industry, we've got some nice new players in that area and that's a really important area to any town as far as attracting and retaining people living here. So, go to Tara. Thanks, Adrian. Right, uh,
Okay, That's the next speaker, and he's promised not to speak of his native tongue, but it's Hans Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> you can whistle it, that's right. Mag ook in Hollands praten? We zijn nog Nederlanders hier zo? Geen Nederlanders, dus dat maar in Engels doen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming this evening. It's good to see you all. My name is Hans Needers, like Stuart said. I'm putting my name forward because I can believe that I offer you knowledge of the area. I offer you, I'm already lost, honesty, fairness, and transparency. Something that you all want to see from the councillors in, in Tokoroa. I'm a local farmer, and at present my son is running the farm, so that gives me time to, uh, to do other things. I'm sitting in uh, four committees, two uh, local uh, committees in Tiro that are chair and I sit in two other very New Zealand committees. I've been also chairman of the Board of Trustees in Tipoi. Things have changed a lot in Patero. I came here in 1978 as a, a little boy and in um, working on a dairy farm in 1980 we bought our first bit of furniture from the Van Dijk shop. I reckon the Van Dijk shop is an iconic shop in town and that has changed now not only selling furniture, it has changed in selling e-bikes and e-scooters as well, besides all the electronics and whiteware. Our district has gone through a lot of changes as well. And I must uh, commend uh, Stuart, but he set up the TY Howe walkway, and that's immensely popular. The Waikato River Trail is very popular. We see some businesses that have come to New Zealand over the moon. It's a very uh, Likeable shop now, Patero, attracting customers through through Highway 1. Chill has come. The Ringayuru Trust is a wonderful uh, place on the moment to retire. Um, and it's an asset to town. There's been a downside as well that two banks have left us. And that has caused some grief for some elderly people. Things have changed overall. So farming-wise, things have changed as well. So uh, in the olden days we wanted to measure the grass cover, we had to do that by hand. Now we get satellite images sent from, um, from the satellite to our phone and that will tell us how much grass there is in the paddock, where the cows can go tomorrow, where we can shut up silage, uh, how, much, how fast it is growing. Um, New Zealand is growing and so is Patero. Patero's population has also changed. We've got more cultures, we've got more ethnicities, we've got a diverse population in this, in this little community. However, the one thing that hasn't changed is that we want to live here in Patero with our friends, with our family, with our relatives, with our neighbors. And then you say, well, what has that got to do with race? Well, let me explain. When you open up the tap, you want water to come out. It's fair enough. When you flush the toilet, you want it to drain away as quick as, as possible. That's fair enough as well. When you go to the playground <coughs> with your children or grandchildren, you want to have it in good order, equipment in good order, and the place looking tidy. When you go to a cemetery, you want to have that in a respectable manner as well, in a good, tidy way. Our footpaths, talking to the Great Power this afternoon, they need to be in good order as well. People with a walker or people with a scooter, they want to go on and off the footpaths easily. All good and well, <coughs> but you don't want to pay an arm and leg for it. Are we already here? One minute. One minute. I'm oh, just nice. <laughs> you all want to pay an hour and wait for it. Can you make it a long minute? I'll see what the box is. So that's where I come in with my business expertise. So I want to make sure that our council runs a lean and an efficient business. Not only that, I want our business council to be a trusted business by you and me and, me and all the right players. I want to have a business that shows transparency, that shows open-mindedness, that shows honesty, no hidden agendas. 
a business that moves with the times, environmentally, sustainably, with an open heart, with an open mind, and with a future in mind. And in that respect, we want to make Patero a vibrant town, a service provider to people and to businesses. And we want for our puny, hang on, I'm almost there. <laughs> Just, just All right, okay. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you. And we want for our Puni and Patero to attract its eco ecotourism. That's a good woman. I believe our sports facilities are an important asset to the town, and the prospect of finding work in our town is also very important. And I believe that the vision of Patero, of Pride in Patero, with its growth plan, is great. In order to realize all of this, there needs to be an astute counselor to represent our ward in the Tokoroa Council Chamber. And my job as a councillor will be to study all the relevant documentation and bring my knowledge of business into this meeting place, to attend all the meetings. And I've noticed that sometimes not all the meetings are attended by councillors, so I want to make sure that I'll be there when the crucial voting comes in and to network with the local people, to network with the business owners, be they retailers, or really the stewards. I'm not done. I thank you very much for listening to me. And I want to Yeah. 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 No, no, well, we've got questions coming later on, so, uh, yeah. So the next one, uh, Sandra. Good evening. I'm Sandra Wallace. I have lived in Patera most of my life. I grew up a farm in, on a farm in Pukitarua, attended Patera High School, and have raised my family and own a home here. At present, I own the Cow Cafe. I previously worked for the BNZ for 19 years, 16 years as manager. I have a good financial brain. Over the years, I've been active where my children were, in Plunkett, Kindergarten, St Mary's Board, Swimming Club, Netball, Junior Rugby. When the kids left home, I was on Pride and Patera and on the Rangaroo Trust Board. I like Patera Town and we're all looking clean, green and inviting. People are telling me that they see our town looking tired, not as well kept as it could be. I'd like to see Patera as a place to be proud of. Rubbish dumps and recycling is quite the topic of conversation at the moment. Let's get this better. Pride begins at home and in our community. The council has made an indent here. I'll ensure this remains a focus and we get this right. I'm keen to pursue options that will reduce our landfill. If we have less rubbish going to the dump, we are winning. Less money to pay out for dump fees and rubbish bags and kinder on our environment. Options can be including people having compost bins at home, better recycling and mindful of what we throw out. Can it be used for something else? What lovely sporting facilities we have here, but we need a few improvements. Many sporting events are now held at Glencho Park, but there's no water fountains here. Some of the best water in the world and no water available for drink for our sporting people. Patera Swimming Pools, another lovely place, but lacking shade for families to sit under and enjoy this wonderful facility. The skate bowl, a popular hangout, but what more can we do? I'm keen to get perhaps um, BMX and skateboard demos happening here, so our youth can enjoy that, and it's not much to get that happening. As a business owner, let me be your voice for council. What, can, what do we need? Clean footpaths, better parking, representation on council. Let's attract more businesses to town and create more jobs, more section and more housing. Farmers make up a large percent of our district and contribute a large amount of rates to our council. I will listen and do what I can to ensure concerns are listened to and farmers are made to feel a valued part of our community. We are blessed to be in such a beautiful part of the country, lovely green paddocks and fresh air. For our elderly, I wish to be approachable and available to listen to concerns. My mum lives in Pateri, and with many other retired people, I want her to feel valued, safe and secure in our community. Exciting things to do for our town. Let's make our dreams a reality. Let's look at a cycleway along the old, river, oh, sorry, the old railway line to Rotorua. How, how can we make this happen? 
This would be an awesome way to bring more folk to town, more job opportunities and good for fitness and health. There are already people waiting, wanting to help in this area. Can we look at funding options, swift trust, fundraising? This could be more than a dream. Can we have the Waikato River Trails come into the Taru? Another good opportunity to beautify our town, job opportunities with a good fitness and health element. The Taru moving forward and Prime for Taru have great volunteers. Let's support these people and help to make, get some of these things happening. I've been out and about talking and listening to people. Everyone I've spoken to loves our town and wishes it to be more to be a, to move ahead, to be vibrant, pretty and a safe place to live, with things to do for our, life, for our youth and the elderly. It is important to attend council meetings and I will endeavour to do this to the best of my ability and my financial brain will make it easy to understand numbers and budgets. I'm excited and eager to represent our town and district and I promise I will be 100% committed. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to you this evening. Um, my name's Gary Petley. I'm a product of the community, if you like. I was born here in 1955 and went to school across the road at St. Mary's, then Araka Heights, and then to the local high school. I worked at Kinley for 20 odd years and did line haul driving from down to the South Island and back in just into my third season at Fonterra. So I guess. Um, like I said earlier at the Great Power meeting, I'm not there to directly challenge uh, the incumbent councillors. An opportunity was there and, and I decided to take it. Um, I consider myself to be a blank canvas as, insofar as the um, local politics go, but then I don't see that as a bad thing. I. Um, I think that um, that can be positive because I have no hidden agendas and um, mindful of the fact that a lot of the a lot of the planning and that probably for the next three or four years is already being done and already in the, in the works so I want to be a part of that and the council or the, the district I guess like I alluded to earlier has been good to me been good to my family I have uh, four adult sons, 16 grandchildren, and been married for 44 years, so I've been through the, through the ringer, if you like, but, and, and, and therefore not, not, not uh, you know, that this council should be a breeze, really, uh, compared to what I've had to put through in married life, and I've had to, I've had to grow up and learn a hell of a lot from that. But, um, but I guess I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded and all for, um, not so, so much, you know, like, I don't want to be in a position of saying I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that because clearly until such time as you get in there and see what has been set in front of you, then um, I think I'll be a bit, bit negligent in, um, in saying that. But all in all, if, um, do I think I can do the job? Absolutely. And I'm honest enough to suggest that, um, that um, I'm not expecting to be your first choice, but I think I will be a very good second or third choice, for sure. So, um, because Hans used up a hell of a lot of the time, I might just cut it short <laughs> and let everybody else catch up. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the sense of humour. <laughs> You're going to have it. Yeah. Right, uh, Linda now. A bit different for me being part of the event and not part of the audience for a change. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, kia ora, for Linda Galbraith. Oh. Hello, I'm Linda and I'd like to represent you at Council. Um, compared to the other candidates, I'm a relative newcomer, um, having only moved here six years ago, but I have contributed to the economy for about 14 years. Um, in 2005, I escaped from Auckland and moved to Flaxmere, which is a suburb in Hastings. Um, 
we regularly travelled back and forth to Auckland to see my parents and Pataru was our choice of rest stop and food stop. So we have spent well over the last 14 years of travelling through. Um, it was the obvious choice to move here when my partner decided it was close. It was time to move closer to his Marais and Pataru was a good town. We felt it, it felt right and we'd been here so often we knew the food was good at least. <laughs> um, I had moved from the affluence of Auckland to the deprivation of Blacksmere. And just to clarify, I saw other people's affluence in Auckland. I did not actually have any myself. Um, in Flaxmere, I was involved in the community patrol and with the neighbourhood policing team. And it was very satisfying to see the difference that we were able to make. The attitude of the community became more positive, people felt safer, they interacted with their neighbours, and morale was vastly improved. Pataru has nowhere near the issues that Blacksmith has, um, but sometimes there is an underlying negative streak, streak, especially with comments on social media, but also those that disres disrespect the whole community with things like vandalism and dumping rubbish. Pataru and the surrounding areas have so much potential. We've got some good things coming our way in the 10-year plan. Um, I want to see Pataru grow, but not to lose its character or identity. Um, I want to see our community thrive and not just survive. Um, business growth, more people, more jobs, um, a big slice of the tourist dollar, more strategic spending, and we may be able to tame that rates bill one day. We need to keep focused on the positives and proactively work through the negatives. If I'm elected, it will be my role to represent you, to listen to your concerns, address them with council and push for a satisfactory resolution. We do have to remember that council is not the enemy. It's made up of the people that you vote for and that you want to represent you. So, you know, that's what our job would be. Um, well, I think that was well under five minutes. But I'm not a talker, I'd much <laughs> rather roll up my sleeves and get the job done. <laughs>
Pateru moving forward. We have Raide Pateru in Tokoroa. We regret that we don't have the uh, 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 organizations like that. Uh, and I spoke briefly about Pateru moving forward this afternoon, and then the feedback to me was where is that going? That's been going for so long that you know, uh, it's almost gone off the radar. Well, it hasn't. Our council uh, and I've been involved along with Raven on the committee that is kind of overseeing it or helping to develop it. And Pateru moving forward, once it gets notified, hopefully later this year, is going to be one of the greatest steps forward. Uh, I was told this afternoon we need more than old people in town. We need a range of people um, of all ages. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, a lot of the work that the council does is to help young people. Uh, we have trade training. We work together, I think, with Trinity on driver training. Because one of the things that really uh, hurts young people is when they hit court driving without a license and then they have got a record and from there it goes from bad to worse so you know uh, helping people in our community one of neil sinclair's great achievements was to have a bus service that goes from the south waikato to waikato university the bus has got wi-fi on board so these students can go on the bus they can do their homework or whatever and the bus brings them back again at the end of the day it enables particularly maori and pacific island people who don't thrive when they are okay <laughs> um, who don't thrive when they are away from their the to um, get their education uh, and do well so to me, it is a balancing act, but we need to look after our young people. If, if our, we say we want the South Waikato to be vibrant, to be a good place to live, so we need a range of organizations. We need young people. Uh, we need building activity. Uh, I have seen with my own eyes how much work building brings. So we need more housing, but first of all, the infrastructure to go with it. And that is where Pateru moving forward. Uh, we have uh, discovered that some of our water and maybe some of our sewage isn't quite as good as it should be. So that's where a lot of effort is. So simply a little bit of vision for the future, and I would like to be, I would like to be part of that future. Thank you. I just recap on a couple of things uh, with the chair moving forward. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things come up uh, in there that is uh, commercially very sensitive, and we can't actually announce that until it becomes a reality. But what we were given last last time, uh, I'd like to share with you that the current population is about 25,000 for the South Waikato. By 2030, was it? Something like 42,000. So what we've got to do is be thinking right outside the square, can we handle that growth? I mean, you imagine Pataro with another 2,000 odd people living here, how much is that going to change it? And how fast are we going to react to that? So that's a very important thing. Uh, with the, yeah, this, um, we can't say a lot about the commercial part because it's very, very sensitive. Uh, but we're working closely with Paul Bowden, the economic development man. He comes up with some very, very uh, insightful stuff uh, with the Swift Trust um, and all that. So just watch the space. Uh, that, but I can tell you that I've never experienced being part of anything but the enthusiasm and the, the deep thinking that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, we will be notifying you as it comes out, but there are some exciting things going to happen in Pateri. And we can celebrate, uh, yeah, it's, a really, it's going to be a really neat place to live. Uh, talking with all the sports clubs at the moment, uh, aren't we, Kimberley? And, and that is 
they've coming up with with a, a real into a good space, and uh, we yeah, we are very very fortunate with the class of people that we've got in those sports fields. So uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff, and we're talking to the right people, but we've got to get all the ducks in the row. So you people as councillors are going to be part of that, and uh, we need to encourage you to be able to transpire the councillors into our thinking uh, and vice versa. But the relationship between Prime Minister, Darren Moon Ford and Council is very, very special, and uh, we are very, very fortunate to have that relationship. Would I be right, Denny? Yeah. Uh, so we've got a retirement from the council and he's going to move on to other pastures. Um, so I'm going to invite Gray to come along and have a, a five minute session. And um, then I've, I've got your question, but I'm not going to actually tell you until we're ready for you. Thank you, uh, Stuart. Ko monga totally te monga, ko pokai whenua te awa. Ko rā ki te marae, ko nā te pakea te iwi, ko Grey Baldwin Aho. Uh, my grandfather bought the farm at Litchfield in 1955 and we've been there ever since. So uh, I'm a little bit of a local lad. Just speaking to um, Stuart's comments about moving on, I have enjoyed my one term at council. I think I've learnt a lot, especially district plans, long term plans, annual plans, <laughs> cunning plans. <laughs> we've had the whole lot. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge uh, two things in particular. I, I'm not an expert in dog registrations and liquor licensing and some of the things that you'll enjoy doing, you new ones if you get there, but um, um, just acknowledge Jenny, the Mayor asked me to chair the audit committee for this last term and that's, I think that's gone well and I'm pleased to say I presided over my last one this afternoon and while the report's still in public excluded, I, you know, the financial um, situation of the council is good. We're in a strong position and whatever happens going forward that old as well. The second thing the Mayor asked me to do, which I've enjoyed and felt relevant, and is why I'm moving on, is submit to Regional Council on the um, Healthy Rivers Plan PC1, which I did on behalf of the District Council, and actually tweaked my interest a bit in, <laughs> in Regional Council Affairs, which I'll talk about now. So um, the stakes in the Regional Council coming up for this district are huge. The, Healthy Rivers PC1, we have to get it right, and there is all sorts of risks, even this week. Wellington has come out with a whole lot of more fresh water management, you must do this, you must do that. Now the Regional Council is still going to be implementing that, but we need people there, especially from this district, to, to make sure. So, so two examples. In this district, we have the largest, most comprehensive and state-of-the-art milk dryer in the world. Litchfield. You know what? Litchfield started processing milk on Thursday, and I know because my farm is on the boundary, and you can see when the big vents go up, they will shut it down just before Christmas because there is not enough milk in the district. Now, we have to get the balance right between making sure that farmers do keep clean waterways and do keep on environmental improvement, but we have to have the industry here or Litchfield will not have a good future. And that's sad because it's a fantastic facility and I was one of some of your other councils, remember we got invited out there because we had done a good job of processing their consents and we got shown through. It's a fantastic facility. It must have milk and if we're, regional council stuffs up, farming will go down and there'll be less milk out there which means less employment for Potaruru and, and whatnot. The second thing is, is Kinleith and, and Gary you mentioned that, that is a world-class, state-of-the-art, fantastic facility, and they have a lot at stake if the Regional Council Healthy Rivers Plan issue doesn't go well. Log processing and that side will be under pressure. So I aim to get in onto Regional Council and make sure that we have uh, a balance. So, and, and, and I'm supported clean water, so I'm, somebody said you had 16 <coughs> grandchildren, where was it? I've got three little fellas. I just, as I just said to you in my mihi, our farm goes along Nutiwera and Pukai Whenua and the two rivers meet at the back of our farm. I want to take my grandsons fishing there like I did when I was a young fella and you need to have clean water to do that. So I'd also, so that's all the farming and the water stuff. Just speaking to something that Sandra spoke about, cycle, I'm a cyclist and you might not think looking but I'll be getting on my bike again shortly but Sue is a cyclist, Richard is a cyclist. We've got good cycling here. I 
think that's great and I will be, if I get elected to regional council, who do have a role in funding and cycling and cycleways, I think that's great. I'm also interested in um, biodiversity, I think that's important, it's another um, regional council responsibility. Climate change, don't think because we haven't got any coastline in South Waikato we're not affected by um, you know, climate change. <coughs> Council's budget for fixing culverts has gone up significantly because rain events, water through the thing, scours out the road, messes up the culvert. We have to get on top of climate change. So again, regional council is um, a key thing there. So I've enjoyed council. Thank you to fellow councillors and the mayor. Um, I'm hoping to move on, but there's an election. So we'll just wait and see. Yeah, well, Right, we're going back. Uh, we'll start again with uh, Adrian. Now, her question was. Where's my question? Yeah. Oh, I tip it over. Sorry. Now, Adrian's question was <coughs> to value our youth and the, and the content plan says the council will work with PIP and upskilling community leaders to connect with youth and develop community initiatives with them. So could you tell us what you think about that in two minutes? Yeah, well, Chris, when I, moved, when I was first on council, I think it was when I was first on council, we did have a youth council which unfortunately folded um, because it was really hard to get youth leaders along. So I would definitely be in favour of um, us having another go at something like that and getting youth involved. There's a governance management thing involved here. The actual upskilling and, and um, developing community initiatives would probably be more of a management thing. Governance as well would be to say, yes, we support that happening and to make sure that the people and the, and the um, resources are there for, um, for that to be done. As far as uh, facilitating the process and the how to engage youth, again, that's a management thing, but um, normally that would involve um, breaking the youth down into various interest groups or whatever and finding out the best way of communicating with each of those um, groups and, um, and engaging with all of those and finding out what they want and, and how we can best make that happen for them. So that was good Thank you. Good. One minute. The second is for Council to regularly communicate to Pateri moving forward, PIP and Pateri community regarding the impact of the Healthy Rivers uh, Pat James one. So I'd like to make a few comments about it. Yes, uh, Stuart. Um, Gray already um, indicated about uh, healthy rivers, and it will be a major uh, cost to our community. Um, as farmers, uh, we have been front-footing this, and we've been planting our, our farm, all the wetlands and the drains, and uh, we have entered uh, farm, and, farm environmental uh, wards as well, and came out of it uh, several mirrors. Uh, we see the importance of clean rivers and clean streams and clean waterways. So I'm totally passionate about that. I have to say and commend the council that, um, that they have implemented for their uh, stormwater and uh, cleaning their wastewater as well, a riparian planting in Tokoroa, Potero and Tiro. That has come at a certain cost as well. Um, that is very progressive and I think um, South Dakota District Council has to be commended on that one too. Um, so it is in all our interest to implement these things. Like Gray said, the, the central government came out with another plan last week. Um, that has to be discussed by the council. And I'll be, uh, if I'm elected, I'll be definitely uh, taking part in this discussion. Um, in my job as a councillor, I want to communicate with Patero moving forward and uh, Pride of Patero and uh, do that on a regular basis. Um, and uh, come up with uh, with uh, material to to make uh, Patero a vibrant town and to make sure that it is uh, a clean town. It was mentioned about Carroll Harvey and that it has um, left and maybe left a bit of a, um, a gap in there. We are farming next to the Raika stream. The Raika stream has cleaned up a hell of a lot, even though we planted off the Raika stream was Carl Harvey leaving the district that cleaned up our Araka stream. I'm involved with another committee in Tiro. 
I'm almost done. I'm almost, yeah, I'm almost done. I'm involved with another committee in Tirao, and that is uh, refurbishing or re rezoning now an old rubbish dump in Tirao. And we want, that is next to the Raka Street as well, and we want to tidy that one up too. And I'm done almost. Um, is that enough, Stuart? I was wondering whether uh, Jenny could comment because if you go on council, we don't want you running past on time, do we, Jenny? You've <laughs> <laughs> uh, done very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, now, Sandra, her uh, question is uh, PIP Derby for Swift uh, challenge to review the committee market model and to create a wider appeal and a stronger link to artesian uh, foods in our town. Thank you. Uh, at the moment, we're very lucky that we've got over the moon cheese as our on our main highway, so that brings a lot of people into town already, so that's actually doing very well and recognised worldwide. Um, we also have Moose Bars and Oints, is another um, butchery in town, which is also another wonderful business that we have here. So definitely, the more um, businesses that we can have um, that are providing this type of um, hospitality and bringing people to town, better. Um, I know that there's other interested people out there in um, like Home Brewery that's um, perhaps looking at coming to town as well that would actually do uh, bring another element to that. Um, having a cafe myself, it's very important that people do stop and we do our own cooking in that there. There's Bev's Delights as well, does own home cooking. So at the moment we've certainly got the first step along this line. Um, in the future I do believe that there's um, opportunities to have this as a a way to attract people to people stop in town so that they do actually buy from our businesses. It has been looked at even um, Kensington Street doing a link um, from the plaza going to the water park and across to um, over the moon and so that we've got even looking at perhaps community market um, like the likes of farmers markets in other towns so that would be really cool if we could actually bring that to town as well and we have those options at Kensington Street linking it all together Kensington Street, Community Markets, the Food Court, Moose Bars and Oints, Over the Moon Cheese, Better Lights, um, my cafe and other food places in town. So it's actually a very good way to bring people to town. Thank you. Uh, you flicked at uh, the water park and along the street here, which is part of our bigger plan. We're going to have uh, very shortly uh, discussions about the water park. Uh, we we met, so uh, that will be coming up public very shortly. Anyway, next question, uh, Gary, um, Rakawa Council of Territory Four uh, will prepare and develop a plan for the YO to keep more of the tourist dollars in Pateri. Um And obviously, Rakawa is a very important part of it. So, welcome comments. Of a tricky one given that I'm the only Māori in here. <laughs> but, um, it's a bit merry, they won't understand. But at, at, at the end of the day, I think democracy sort of, uh, and I've had to write down a few quick things, but democracy dictates the opinion or input will bring a more meaningful and diverse viewpoint to decisions that relate to our community, environment, and future. And such issues are of, of deep importance to Māori around the water urban planning and cultural heritage. So I would I would encourage the council and, and would be keen if elected to be part of any discussions going forward. And I think and and from from my point of view, I think you know when you mention issues that uh, that close to Māori, people tend to take a step back. And and I think having a positive exchange and, and the council engaging in positive corridor, if you like, with the stakeholders in the, in the district can can be more meaningful and offer a diverse viewpoint on things going forward and be less divisive. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Uh, now, Linda, now, her question is, the council has an ongoing commitment to use the Creative Community Scheme to incorporate all quality public art works by local artists in our community. Uh, if you were a councillor, what skills would you bring to that process? No, I'll just shout. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm 
one of the organisers of the Pataru Community Market that's held at the hotel once a month. And I see a lot of artists, artisans, very creative people coming to that. Um, and I know they would like a really good outlet for their works. They don't have enough money to afford shops. Um, we had a very proactive lady here last year who wanted to set up a Waikato Arts Trail where you could go around to these people's places and see them doing their work in their places. Um, this would be something that could be looked at. Again, she's um, moved out of town, I think, so it kind of all fell by the wayside, but it would be something that could be um, looked at starting up again. Um, also, the plaza here itself is already hosting a couple of local artists, one from Arapuni, one who's local Pataru, I believe, and we have um, promises from the Pataru High School that they will be decorating one of the walls in the pavilion with the high school art um, classes work. So there's a lot of things we could do. We could also um, work with a rotating art scheme with ours and Tokoroa and Tirao and just have, we've got a lot of buildings, a lot of public buildings that could have the artworks on a travelling show around different areas to make sure everybody gets their artworks seen by as many people as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the first uh, question is, uh, one of the challenges for councils is ensure that the cost of development and growth is a uh, in an equitable by recovering reasonable costs from developers uh, because a lot of this development is going to come back on the council and uh, as rate payers we want the developers to pay for it so I have a few comments on that please. thank you and thank you for that question because that is right up my alley <laughs> uh, we have a debate uh, during our planning for Patera moving forward and other development we have looked at what would be fair, what is reasonable to us, the community, because the community has got a stake in it. We need growth, we need proper services, but uh, at what cost to the ratepayers and at what cost to the developers. So uh, what generally happens is any development, uh, the developers develop the whole um, area, and then it is passed on to council uh, at no cost to council. So then uh, council reaps the benefits from that in increased rates uh, and increased values and activity. So uh, our staff have recommended to us don't kill the golden goose before it's laid its eggs. So staff say be reasonable look at what are the values uh, in surrounding areas, what could be the values in South Waikato, uh, and then set your um, contribution policy accordingly. We have a contribution policy, but we have discounted it to 20 uh, to zero at the moment. And my view on that has been either 20% or 40%. But uh, as always, I'm one voice around the council table. Uh, my opinion is that the market can bear a little bit more contribution than what we are looking for. Uh, and, and again, as our Pateru uh, move, moving forward plan comes to reality, um, I'm sure we are going to have that discussion again. And I, I would like to pay tribute to our mayor because uh, in all those discussions, you proved to be a very strong leader. You have the district's best interest at heart. Uh, and, and again, uh, because of good leadership, we have the ability to have really strong discussions. And I would like to say one more thing. Thank you to Pride in Pateru. Uh, say in Tokoroa, people are so jealous of the organization that we have in Pateru. Uh, you know, the work that you guys are doing for the town is just invaluable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, Ray, uh, we just want you to comment. Uh, my question to you would be, 
straight up there. Yeah, if you are elected to the, uh, just the regional council, one of the questions that I have is, you understand very clearly the war issue, but what are we going to do about sewage, water treatment, and all that from a local council point of view? The cost of uh, redoing, if, if, imagine if we had another 10,000 people here, with the sewage system code, with the water system code, can the regional council help us in any way by reducing our rates for a start? Because <laughs> Everyone, I'll look at, uh, just a comment on that, please. Everyone else got their question 10 minutes early. I've got a wing at right? <laughs> <laughs> so look... Um, because you can. Yeah, well, I, and I will. Um, the first time when I got elected to the council, we got taken on a tour, and we went to the to Tokoroa um, Waste... I, for, the mayor will forgive me, I called it the turd pond, but that's not an appropriate <laughs> word. But it is the wastewater facility in Tokoroa. I asked the manager, how much nitrate is being released from this facility? He told me the number, it's 111 kilograms a day. I did some quick calculations. If you had my farm, Hans's farm, who else is a farmer here, about three or four farms, that is the same amount of release of nutrients from three or four farms as the entire city of Tokoroa. So the real issue is, it, it isn't now, now that's not to say that um, district councils and you will have the debates, we're in the middle of a big wastewater project as someone alluded to, but the real issue for Healthy Rivers, in reality in this district is not the towns, it is the farmers, and I'm saying that as a farmer. We have hundreds of farms in the district that are releasing nutrients in, and so what I would like to see, Stuart, to answer your question is, Things like offsetting, and we've discussed this, offsetting means if we spent some ratepayers' money helping the farmers reduce their release of dung and urine from farm, and then we didn't have to spend 10, 20, 30 million, whatever it's going to cost, rehashing the wastewater system, that would make a whole lot of sense because there would be less um, effluent from the farms because in reality the towns are not the problem. So now offsetting is not allowed under the current thing. It is under debate, it should be, and if I get there, Stuart, I will be putting, having a poke and saying, let's not die in a ditch over making sh just one wastewater facility for a district council. Let's think about the bigger picture. How are we going to fix the water? You can, you've got to look at both sides yeah. of the ledger. It, it's uh, the unfortunate part is that the first thing they do is they knock dairy farms in. Uh, but the councils have some responsibility and the costs are huge with the wastewater thing as well. Yeah. Look, so look, it's a burden for, for us as taxpayers as well. I understand. So, a quick little anecdote from the campaign trail, because everyone here is campaigning and so am I, and I've been to Matamata and Morrinsville and Pyroar and because the district councils. I talked to the Tatua dairy farmers up there, they're great people. You know what one of them said to me, it was actually the chairman, he said, don't be ashamed of being a farmer, Gray, being elected to the regional council. All the people that work in our plant, who do the milk powder, who work, there's 400 families, they all support the dairy industry because they know who pays the bills. It's the same thing as I said before with our Litchfield site. So yeah, I'm not ashamed of being a farmer. We're getting hit by the bank manager, we're getting hit by the government, we're getting hit by the world. I'm going to keep milking cows because one day, and, and Sue uses milk product, uh, you know, this cycle will turn around. I feel like saying to some townies and Aucklanders, do you want anything to eat or not? No, I can stop milking cows. Do you want anything to eat? Yes, right. Well, we're going to have to milk cows. We're going to have to have beef and lamb and all these things. So I don't think it's the end of the world, Stuart, and I'm going to be there if I can, having a hope of making sure that the farmers well are, are yeah. looked after a bit, right? Well, all the way. Um, I've got a question, John. Uh, if you've got a question, please. Uh, I'll do my best to put it to ask the question for a particular councillor if you want that question asked by that person. So, any questions, please? Yeah, I'd like to ask um, Herman, in his 21 years, uh, how many of those years have you spent on the Tauru, um, Pride of Tauru, or Tauru moving forward as an active committee member? Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Neil. The, the answer to that is none. Uh, <laughs> because as a councillor, I try to take responsibility for the whole of the community. Uh, and 
um, I value the work that's being done. I value the feedback that comes from there. Um, as a councillor, as of right, I could attend the meetings, but uh, yeah, uh, my judgment has been uh, being a councillor and being responsible for the policies and for carrying that out uh, have been, of, to me, of greater urgency. Uh, to add, add to that, though, uh, uh, Herman has been on the river trails from the very conception for two terms, was it? Um, and, you know, he's, uh, he's been very enthusiastic about the council's part in the river trail. Yeah. Yeah, I, if I could ask the um, council Bell uh, the same question. Uh, Please. Both councillors, I'd like to find out what their contributions have been. Um, I belong to lots of, sorry, but lots of groups. But we are a group that's funded by council. There's sometimes a conflict of interest thing that comes up. Um, if we're if we're on the trust of a certain organisation, then then I can't vote in favour of them getting funding. Same with the Timber Museum. I support the Timber Museum in lots of ways, but if, if I was part of their organisation, I would not be able to vote in their favour if, if it came to giving them funding for something, because I would be seen to have a... If, as belonging to that organisation, I would have a conflict of interest. So I belong to lots of organisations, but ones that are funded by council, normally um, a councillor is appointed to each of those groups, so that councillor is the councillor representation representative on that group. So does that make sense? Any other questions, please? Yeah. Well, I'm so all, uh... Can I just ask a question? Uh, there was a couple of people... No, you can. I can. <laughs> there was comments made about progress on the water park. I think, Adrian, you were someone who commented on that. I'd just like you to tell us what you know about what has delayed progress on the water park. Not a lot, in a nutshell. Um, I know that there's... Oh, I don't know why I brought this with me. <laughs> um, I know that it's now become part of a bigger plan, um, which involves um, Kensington Street, and I think that's great. I think that will be wonderful um, that it's become part of it. And that's to me, that's probably what's delayed it, because there are new, bigger plans. Well, and, well that's the thing. I don't know. Yeah. And, that's, and that's an issue in itself. Yeah, but uh, it's been funded in this current year, Jenny, isn't it? Uh, and we've got a certain amount of spend going through the tendering process now, so that we're going to see a vision of what that will look like. So hold the space. Uh, we're very excited about it. And we will be having public consultation so that everybody will get their say as to what the ultimate end will going to be. But it's about celebrating who we are, dairy farmers, timber, but most importantly, water. Um, we need some of that.